You're listening to the Telltale Channel. If you like what I do and you want to see me continue to do it, don't forget to check out my Patreon. You can find some ad-free, uncensored, complete versions of my videos on my website, owenmorgan.com. All links are in the description. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for coming. Hopefully you can hear me okay. I have a new audio interface, the thing that connects the microphone to the computer, basically. Um, everybody hear me okay? I think so. Just tell me in the chat there. want to make sure. So I want to talk about Hank Kuhneman today. Now, a lot of people know who this guy is, but I want to expand upon it a little bit because... Well, for one thing, he's a uh, he's a, a Kenneth Copeland preacher. He's a Trump prophet, and he believes that he prophesied that Donald Trump is going to win in 2016, and he prophesied he would win in 2020. And of course, he didn't. So, <laughs> oopsie daisy. Uh, anyway, he claims all kinds of ridiculous prophecies. I want to talk about him for a second. Because he had a Pyrrhic victory recently. Is that the word I'm looking for? Pyrrhic victory? Define Pyrrhic. Maybe that's not the right word. Uh, a victory won at too great a cost. Okay, no, that's not, the, that's not the term. He won a victory that wasn't even really a victory. He thought it was. Basically, Donald Trump, um, just a, a Supreme Court case just decided that Colorado could not kick him off the ballot for having violated the 14th Amendment, which is about insurrection or whatever. Um, this guy over here on the, on the uh, well, on my right, he is convinced that this is God's work and that he prophesied it and everything else. So I want to talk about him. Some of his early comments... And you can just kind of go through time and see what he's had to say. And then we're going to talk about what he has to say now. I have a brand new sermon from the guy right here where he is just, oh, he is, I don't even know how else to put it. He's against that. Which is he's gloating. I guess gloating is probably the word. Anyway, let's talk about Hank Kuhneman. While we do, I just want to mention something. OwenMorgan.com slash book. Check out my book. I have 35 orders left before, I, before the book pays for itself, basically. Uh, I'm trying to get pre-orders to pay for the book. I've already paid for line editing. It's in that process right now. And I need 35 more orders before I get to the point where I can, you know pay for all of the other stuff. I mean, I'm going to pay for it anyways, obviously. It's coming out of my account, but I really want the book to pay for itself. So owenmorgan.com slash book. I'd greatly appreciate it. And I'll shout your name out on stream, uh, first name only, when you do buy it, because it'll tell me on my watch. Anyway. All right, let's talk about Hank Kuhneman here, shall we? Oh, and uh, I'm sorry. While we talk about Kuhneman, we're going to play some... Uh, Mario, we're going to play some Mario World. Yeah. All right, let's listen to Kuhneman. This clip I have here, this is from 2018, late January 2018. Okay? So it's leading into the 2020 election, and he's got a message for us. That's why we have a president right now from New York. It's no coincidence. People, you can hate it if you want, but you're going to go against certain things that God has chosen to, to put his hand on. And, and, and watch. Right, how do you handle the things he did before he was a believer in Jesus? I, I only Wait, how do you handle the, the things Trump did before Trump was a believer in Jesus? Bro, Trump was never a believer in Jesus, okay? I'm convinced Trump was our first atheist president. The dude is a complete charlatan and is only pandering to the evangelical voting bloc because he wants their votes. That's it. He doesn't, you think he cares about Hank Kuhneman or any of his congregation or whatever? No. So how does Hank Kuhneman justify Donald Trump sleeping with a porn star and um, paying her hush money when he was running for his, or running for president? 
how does he justify all the other stuff that he did? Oh my God, there's an endless list of unchristian things Trump did. How does he justify that? Before he was a believer in Jesus. I, I only report the message. By the way, I hope you caught what I just said. The things he did before he was a believer yeah. in Jesus. Okay, Trump's never, in my opinion. You know who Trump's a believer in? Trump is a believer in Trump. That's it. It doesn't go any deeper than that. I'm off center by just the slightest bit, and it's driving me insane. I just have to... Sorry, I gotta help. hold on. Just got to... Just a hair. Okay, that'll do, I suppose. Anyway, sorry, I'm OCD, and I want to make sure it's exactly right. All right, let's uh, continue listening. So this guy believes that Trump was once not a believer in Jesus, but is now a believer in Jesus. Okay, go on. Well, I praise God for the blood. Because of the blood of the lamb, I don't have a past. How about you? <laughs> because of the blood of the lamb, I don't have a past. I don't, what are you talking about? I don't understand what he, what he means. Well, then a lot of the people in the Bible should be disqualified. Uh, I, I think that... Ah, that's how he does it. I was wondering how he's going to justify Donald Trump's grotesque behavior. Um, the answer? Well, there are a lot of really bad people in the Bible who did some bad things, but who were also like Jesus lovers or whatever, or, or like God lovers or whatever you want to call it. Okay. All right, there's that. Um, these people claim that Donald Trump has something called the Cyrus anointing. Cyrus anointing is like this thing where, oh God, I don't like, I, I don't want to get into it too deeply, but the Cyrus anointing basically means that he's going to be God's man, even if he isn't godly himself. I should have come into this level with the Yoshi. That's a shame. The key thing is, is, is what is God's plan now? God's plan is, and I've been prophesying this for years, Sid, that God would make America great. That He's been prophesying God would make America great. Happens to be their saying. 2020, God's going to make America greater again. He's going to make it greater again. Oh, my God, dude. Come on. 2024, they're going to say God has made America greatest again this isn't oopsie daisy yeah um claimed that donald trump is gonna win in 2020 and uh he didn't and then claim he's gonna win in 2024 i don't know i guess we'll see dude has no place to make any of these claims i need patience i keep like trying to jump the gun see i need patience. i just gotta be patient just be patient no no need to rush right now Anyway, God, this guy is so, like, shameless, you know? He made all of these claims about Trump being elected in 2020 and 2024 and all this other junk, and he came to nothing because he lied. He claimed to hear the voice of God when he did not. It's just, like, shameless, dude. Going away. New York City, the reason why 9-11... Our nation was pierced. This nation's never been the same. The nations of the earth have never been the same. God is trying to reestablish a blood right. It's no coincidence the president is... Wait, he's trying to reestablish a blood right? What? From New York, that's where the towers fell. He also is part of Trump Tower. Towers fell. He was part of World Trade, World Trade Center, because... Like, I don't understand all these connections he's made. What the hell is he talking about right now? What do these connections even mean? God is revisiting this nation to establish a blood right. Whoever gets the blood right gets a legal right to rule. Why do we have rights as Christians to bind and loose? Because of the blood right that Jesus provided. But Jesus' blood, it brought something. It brought glory. Because after he was crucified and his blood was shed, the Holy Spirit was poured out. This is more, this is more than just about who's present. It's about a blood right being established by God so that his glory can come. The enemy... Fascinatingly, this what he's saying right now is actually, um, well, it's proof that this uh, Trump as the son of man theology has existed for a while, not just since 2020, but it's existed since at least 2018. If you're unfamiliar with this whole thing, basically in 
three sentences or less. Jesus was supposed to come back to earth, right? He's supposed to come back and finish what he started, which is to take over. Oh, my God, dude. I just, I got to slow it down. I got to slow it down and be patient. That's what I got to do. Anyway, Jesus is supposed to come back and take over and take political control of Israel. Then he will have fulfilled his role as son of man. The son of man is an old, um, an old like prophecy, an old title from the Old Testament about a guy that's going to take control of Israel eventually, political control of Israel, and he's going to be like a cosmic judge, right? Okay. So the claim is that Donald Trump is filling in for Jesus. He's, you know, um, he's doing the thing that Jesus was supposed to do on his second coming. Some people believe that. And that's what Hank Kuhneman is kind of alluding to right now. I wondered when this belief started officially, but this was the premise of the idea espoused in that book, Donald John Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ. You guys remember that 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 book? That See, I got to slow it down, man. I'm rushing around. I got to slow it down. You guys remember that book, Donald John, or Donald J. Trump, Son of Man, the Christ, written by Helgard Muller? I have the uh, cover here. I read the whole thing, by the way. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Shoot. I read the entire book on my Telltale Reads YouTube channel. It's been a while since I posted to it, but this book right here, Donald J. Trump, the Son of Man, the Christ, it kind of outlines... The theology, Trump theology. Seriously, there is Trump theology. I wondered when it came to be, and it seems like we're starting to see kind of the, what, like the, um, the early formations, if you will. He was working real hard to get the blood right. That's why it wants to keep boarding children. That's why it wants to continue its agenda so that, that it has the legal right to rule and to push the church out. God is coming. Nobody is going to remove his church. Nobody's going to stand against the, the, the church that he is raising up. Oopsie daisy. Guy outright claimed that Donald Trump is going to win in 2020. And there's nothing that's going to stop it. And that's just what it is. That's all there is to it. And when he lost, oh boy, Hank Kuhneman was not happy. Call me false, and yet I have stood, and I stand with God. I will stand with this loyalty, whether you think I'm false or not. If that's what you think, then you can take your opinion, and you can shove it. Why is Hank That is not something that I would expect to hear from a preacher, but okay. All right. So anyway, yeah, Hank Kuhneman did not take the news well. And he continued on to prophesy over and over and over again that Donald Trump was, he really won, and that he was bound to take political control of the United States again. You just wait and see. I mean, it was absurd. Decide that he'd win. He did win. And so we had a stolen election. And so uh, this is, uh, by the way, this was April, early April 2021. There was a QAnon belief that, God, it, it's more of like a sovereign citizen belief slash QAnon that Trump was going to secretly be inaugurated in April or no, I'm sorry, in March of 2021. And, uh, of course, it didn't happen, but this is right when that was going on. There were big rumblings in the Trump world at the time. Well, the month of March has had a lot to celebrate. We've, you know, President Trump is not going anywhere. He's launched a media website uh, that you can go to and uh, begin to receive information. He's reengaging himself. Um, and you're not, listen, if you don't like President Trump, that's your problem because he's not done talking. And yeah, clearly. God's not done with him. And so that's, that's extremely important. And there are some things that have to play out because uh, we don't realize how really dark this, this country has been and, and the direction that, you know, the enemy and, and those that cooperate with them would love to take this country. So Again, 
this is Trump theology right here that this guy is laying down for us. So there's been a lot of signs in the month of March alone that are pointing to what I said. There's a there's remember what I said month of March. It's a special QAnon sovereign citizen thing where they believe that Donald Trump was going to be the 17th president because when the Confederacy rejoined with the Union, it formed into a corporation rather than the actual U.S. government, and there have only been 17 presidents or 16 or whatever it is, and Trump is going to be the next one in line after Abraham Lincoln because he's going to take over after blah, 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 you know. And March 4th was chosen because... Uh, anything done, any laws passed, or any changes to the Constitution after the Civil War were invalidated because, um, oh yeah, I'm sorry, and the, uh, what do you, like, and the Constitution, they changed Inauguration Day in the Constitution from March 4th to January 20th, or 20, yeah, January 20th, so... That's their justification, their explanation for why Trump was going to be inaugurated on March 4th secretly. He's going to, like, it's this big secret thing. These people are such jokers, dude. And, it, of course, it didn't happen, but Hank Kuhneman's trying to explain why it didn't happen. He never came out and said, it's going to happen. This is going to be the thing that takes place on this date, whatever. But he's from an ilk that believed it. And he was, like, pushing, you know, the excitement and everything. I remember this game. This, this is my childhood, Red Dragon Empress. Appreciate that. Glad you like the game. Yeah, I like the game, too. It's, it's an awesome game. I've been playing Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. I was going to play that, but, you know, um, some people don't want spoilers. So I'm just going to wait and not play it. Anyway, all right, let's continue. March alone that are pointing to what I said. There's, a, there's an end result. There's a promise. There's a destination that God is trying to get us to, to, to understand. And it has to do with not man's timing. It has to do with the Lord's timing. They say so I know you're disappointed that uh, Trump was not publicly inaugurated on March 4th by the military, as was claimed by QAnon. But... This is God's timing, not man's timing. So just wait it out and see what happens next. That's what he's saying, basically. Oh, Hank, do you know the date? No, but we can know times and seasons. And so I will say it this way. I'm sensing very strongly by the signs that God is giving that we're going to... Yeah, he believes he's a prophet. I, he's sensing very strongly by the signs. Come on, man. A ...review that we are close to justice and righteousness being established. Yeah, this dude is such a joke. Such a joke. It's an embarrassment. So anyway, uh, that was in 2021. This one, I'm not actually sure when this one was from. When was this one from? Let's see. This is called his flop flip prophecy. And yeah, this is late 2021, early 2022. This specific video was from late August 2021. And... He reaffirmed it in January 2022 that this flop flip prophecy was going to happen. And the premise is whistleblowers were going to flip on, you know, the deep state, basically. And the evildoers plans were going to flop. Except, you know, in reverse order, because it won't be flip flop. It'll be flop flip because God speaks in, in American idioms. I right, just listen to this. But watch... For you have heard the saying, flip, flop. But I speak to you this day, flop, flip. You say, what do you mean? I speak flop, flip, because the agenda of hell and those who have agreed and thought that they could steal this land through your election and steal the future from your children, it shall flop. Yeah, I mean, this just, this is painfully stupid to watch because he's like pretending that God's power is running through him or whatever. It's just so stupid. Oh my God. And then 
Watch what shall arise. Whistleblowers after whistleblowers. They shall not only see that their agenda has flopped, they will begin to flip. And God says there will be a turning of my hand and a turning of their of their mouths. So anyway, that's the flop flip prophecy. Hank Kuhneman, like after failing a prophecy, decided to do another one. Like, what is this dude thinking? Just shut your mouth, Hank. My God, bro. Anyway, um, Donald Trump had a victory, if you can call it that, in the Supreme Court recently. Uh, basically, I, from my understanding, it was 9-0. Every single Supreme Court justice said Donald Trump should be on the Colorado ballot, even though he, like, committed, um, you know, insurrection or whatever, despite that fact. He should still be on the Colorado ballot. Um, so, yeah, he got a victory, and this guy is just, like, so happy, saying, See, I told you, everything I said is true. <laughs> God, this is so ridiculous. So listen to, uh, let's just start listening to this video from him and see what he has to say here. This is after Trump got that, you know, that Supreme Court win where he's allowed to be on the, you know, the ballot in Colorado or whatever. Like it even mattered. Like Trump is going to be the prime or the nominee for the Republican Party. And it's going to be Trump v. Biden again. That's just what it is. Anyway, listen to this. This is March 3rd, 2024. Against that which has been concealed, that has been wicked, evil, vile, perverse, concerning this country. The dark deeds that were planned and even are being planned now. Let this frequency go out and break the bands of wickedness. Destroy their assignments, God, and expose. Bring it to light. Sorry, guys. So I got it. I was trying to turn it down, make it a little bit more even with my audio. Hopefully that's better. Sorry about that. Bring it to light. Bring it to light. It'll have to be reported on the news. It'll have to be reported on the news. Bring it to light. God will make Donald Trump the man. He will make him the prophet of God or whatever, the Messiah. And it will have to be reported on the news that Don that Donald Trump is God's chosen guy. You have to be seen and witnessed on the news. Let the frequency go out. Come on, I want to hear some lead. Come on. Come on, prophesy it. Prophesy it? Is that what he just said? Prophesy it? All right, I'm just I'm jumping past the uh, music because Hank Kuhneman seems like the kind of guy that would like try to give somebody a copyright strike for it. Um, all right, let's just jump to right here. See what he says. Be the beginning of the reset. The reset. Oh my God. The reversals, the removals, the rest that's coming to this country to the. Would you say flop flip maybe? You say, Pastor Hank, what are you doing? How many understand that sound always proceeds manifestation? You say, well, I don't know what that means. Sound precedes manifestation. Sorry, I have to fix because this is pulling on my thing. So does is what he's saying that is that like God is going to like um, prophesy before he does anything for anybody or whatever? Why do you come up with that? Do you know the Bible says in the Old Testament sent Judah first? Judah was a tribe. Do you know what Judah's name meant? Praise. And so they were. Uh, wait, Judah meant praise. Is that what he just said? I've never heard that before. What's he talking about? Did he just make that up? 
like Jehovah's Witnesses make these claims about all kinds of stuff, you know. They claim that the name Jehovah is, is God's name. It's not, by the way. It's Yahweh. Jehovah is the name that was created by Jews to prevent people from using God's real name. I guess it was a success, wasn't it? Anyway, it was uh, because there's a superstition about speaking God's name, you know, blasphemy, laws, and all that other junk. Anyway, Jehovah's Witnesses made these claims. Hang on, I'm trying to remember. Give me a second here. Bribe, you know what Judah's name? Oh, yeah. So he said that Judah's name was, it meant praise. Jehovah's Witnesses claim that Jehovah means he who causes to become. Uh, what? No, it doesn't. It doesn't mean anything. It's fake. What are you talking about? It means he who causes to become. That doesn't mean, uh, that, that doesn't even make any sense. What the hell does, where did he get that? We got a Jewish person in the chat. Judah is Jewish. Yahudi uh, is how it was originally pronounced. Yeah. I think um, Judah or Judea was originally... Oh, God, this is a really hard level to do correctly. I'm going to have a lot of safe state rewinding to do here. Anyway, um, the original pronunciation of the original... Um, like uh province or whatever of judea was yehud i think um after they got it back from what you mean who's it's after after the jews returned from exile it was um a province within the Sir the uh persian empire and um yeah the persians let them keep that province and they named it Yehud, anyway. First, Judah was a tribe. You know what Judah's name meant? Praise. And so they were saying, and, and in, where do you think the United Kingdom, the British, got it where they would have the drummer before they would go out into battle with the Redcoats? Come on. Uh, I, what the hell is he talking about? So he's just like making things up all willy nilly. And then he said something about a drummer? And they would have the flutes, and they would go out with trumpets before they went into battle. They got that from God. They got that from Israel, who God taught them how to defeat the enemy, and it would bring... Wait, is he saying that Jews, ancient Jews in Judea, were the ones who invented fanfare, playing the trumpet, and beating drums and stuff before a war took place? Is that what he's saying? great intimidation well it's no different what we're doing today to unseen forces send judah first and the battle will be won all right let me show you another scripture first samuel chapter 16 if they could put it up i think it's verse 13. watch what happened king saul had unseen forces that was messing with him and they if you don't know the uh story king saul according to the biblical narrative was the king that came before David. And he was like, um, he did not like David. Eventually he was, he was chasing David down. And uh, David went south to Judah from Israel and kind of built a band of merry men, if you will, and um, became uh, kind of, what do you call it? Like, uh, David became like a Robin Hood figure. And um, eventually he came back to Israel and took control as the king after Saul died. Uh, he was killed by his courtiers. They were oppressing him. Come on, this is why Paul said in Ephesians 6, verse 12, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And Dude, what the hell are you even talking about right now, bro? I, I, I'm just completely lost right now. Honestly, like what? What are you saying? I'm trying, man. 
said in Ephesians 6, verse 12, you don't wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. And watch what happens. Watch what David does. This is no different. Okay? Are you ready? They can put it up for people around the world to see. So if they can put it on this screen over here, 1 Samuel 16. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, I think that's the story about David and his merry men taking over or something like that. Is that right? I don't remember. I'm so excited to read my copy of your book. I will be I will definitely be getting the audiobook version as soon as it comes out. Yes, I will be at the moment the line editing is done. I'm waiting for them. They said it was March 9th when line editing was going to be done. Um I think I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm a little bit worried it's going to be longer. Um just because it's taking so long in the first place to do the line editing. And you know what? It's like a long project. But anyway, um, the line editing, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the editing is happening. It's in, pro uh, in progress. And as soon as the line editing finishes, I'm doing the audiobook version. That's going to take me like a solid two weeks of 40 hours a week of, of work just to record the book you know oh my god recording it's going to be a nightmare and then editing oh that's going to be even worse editing the book the the new like mp3 or whatever holy christ on a cracker i was thinking about um i definitely wanted to be on audible for sure but i was also thinking about selling the mp3 like just if you want it just the mp3 on my uh like on the website like owenmorgan.com slash book you know that'd be pretty cool right i think if selling the mp3 if people want to buy it that they could um that would probably make it easier to like you know pirate the book but I i'm really not too worried about piracy i think if people really can't afford the book and they really want it and they, they think that it would be valuable to them. I would prefer, please don't pirate the book. But if you're going to pirate the book, then, I, you know, there's nothing I can do to stop you, I suppose. So, anyway, yeah, I'm super excited about it, too. I will be releasing the audio form the moment I can. Interestingly, I heard, I don't know how true it is, because I haven't gone through this whole process yet, but I heard that audible has an exclusivity clause so basically if you work with audible you're not allowed to like sell the audiobook anywhere else under any circumstances you must stick to them so i was thinking about it and um I, like i don't know i probably shouldn't be saying this <laughs> like live on air just in case um you know for legal reasons but whatever um you know how taylor swift basically wrote taylor's version or she like re-recorded taylor's version of her um what do you call, like of her um 1989 album or whatever so somebody owns the rights to the songs the original songs but she re-recorded it and now she owns the rights to like the new album I, i'm thinking i might do that like completely 100 percent re-record like start to finish re-record re-edit re-everything and i'll call it owen's version or something like i don't know I, I gotta talk to a lawyer about whether that's legal or not but it'll definitely be on audible either way all right let's continue with hank verse 13 please i'm gonna wait all right here's the scripture it's coming. And Sam oh, I think he's getting a little frustrated that the back is taking so long. Here we go. And Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his breath and the spirit of the Lord came Okay, let's go back, go back, go back. Maybe it's 1 Samuel 16, 10. I know it's... Oh, yeah, he's getting frustrated with the guys in the back. In there. I know it's in 1 Samuel 16. And Jesse made seven sons to pass. Uh, okay, you know what? Lord, come on, I will find it. <laughs> oh 
Oh my god, dude. Do you know the Bible or not? <laughs> this is kind of funny. King Saul, King Saul, come on, where is it? Is it first Samuel? Is it first Samuel 13? Where is it? Where's my Bible? Okay, I, I'm gonna step forward while I die on my Yoshi. All right, let's step forward to where he's actually preaching here. You just jump. Forward. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Apparently, it was First Samuel 16:14. From Saul, so this was King Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord, not from the Lord, but an evil spirit was permitted by the Lord to trouble him. Verse 15. Watch what happens. What does he do? Okay, let's keep going. 1 Samuel 16, let's keep reading, verse 15, and Saul's servant said unto him, behold now an evil spirit from God is troubling you, keep reading, watch what happens, let our Lord now command thy servants which are before thee to seek out a man who's a skillful player on a what? All right, in the New Testament or in our modern, that would be a guitar. He was skilled on a harp, okay. Right? Right? I mean, people are still skilled on harps. Did this verse say, except in the New Testament that's coming, you can't do this? Huh? What, what the hell is he, like, talking about right now? I don't understand. All right, let me jump forward, because this dude is making absolutely no sense. All right, let's check this out right here. Chapter 5. Well, what's this about the lion? Don't you know Jesus is the lamb? Um, well, he's both. Wait, 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 wait. Is he calling Jesus? Is he saying that Jesus is like a lion? Like he fulfills a different role or something? Saw prophecy, let the lion roar. When they were saying it, roar, lion, roar, right? They were singing a new song. In the congregation of the saints. Right? Let Israel, let America rejoice. Let the children of Zion, that's you, be joyful in their... Wait, why did he say, let America rejoice? I don't see that anywhere in the uh, scriptures. Is this dude just like making up verses in the Bible right now? King, let them praise his name in the dance. Let him sing praises on him with a timbrel and a guitar. For the Lord takes pleasure. Why did he take pleasure? Because the people weren't rigid, religious, apathetic. They weren't holding back. They engaged in the dance, in the singing, in the new song, in the prophetic flow. And watch what happens. It says, let them be joyful in glory. Let us sing aloud and let the praises of God, the high ones, be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in your hand. Well, you don't have a sword in your hand, but you've got it in your mouth. You've got it in your hands, Danny, right? To execute vengeance upon the wicked and punishment upon those who cooperate, to bind up kings with chains. Come on, political figures that are cooperating with evil spirits. Come on. And they're nobles. So I guess that's Biden, po uh, political figures cooperating with like evil spirits. Is that is that what he's saying? With fetters of iron to execute these things. Praise ye the Lord. Last scripture, Revelation chapter 5. Well, what's this about the lion? Don't you know Jesus is the lamb? Um, well, he's both. Jesus is the lion and the lamb. Okay, I don't know like fully what the context is here, but that sounds like complete bullshit. Like he just like made that up right off the top of his head. I don't know. And when he walked on the earth, he was the lamb. He was the sacrificed lamb that came to die for the sins of all. That's what we're going to talk about on good um, on Palm Sunday. That's why when they opened the city gate, and they said, who is this? It was Jesus riding in on a donkey because he was doing what the high priest always did every year, carrying the sacrificial lamb. And he was saying, we don't need that, the high priest. I am him. We don't need the lamb. I am the lamb that was born in Bethlehem's manger, and I'm coming. So he was the lamb. That's why. He, he offered himself. That's why he was a servant of all. But then in I'm wondering how this relates to Donald Trump because you know it does somehow. Revelation chapter 5. Notice what you see. You see who he is in heaven since he's been ascended. The problem with the body of Christ is, oh, we know about the cross. Oh, we'll preach the cross. We'll preach, you know, partly the resurrection, but we forget the ascension where he sat down. 
God the Father handed him. He was a man. The Bible says the man Jesus walked in and put his blood upon the mercy seat, sat down. God gave him a scepter to rule. I don't understand. Like, what's what's his point here? God gave him a scepter to rule, so on and so forth. Yes, okay, great. So, yeah, that's like fundamental to Christianity. Jesus is king. Go on. Called him God, said, sit at my right hand until I make every single enemy your footstool. That ain't a wuss. Ah, now we're starting to uncover the real meaning of what he's saying here. He's trying to say that Jesus isn't a wuss. That ain't a wuss. Revelation 5, here we go. We're almost done. All right, let's read. Verse 6, And behold, lo, in the midst of the throne, and the four beasts in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain. So he's showing him the crucifixion. As he had been slain, he sees the crucified Christ. All right, let me tell you guys something about the book of Revelation. There's, there's something called apocalyptic literature that was very common in, um, I don't know, from, we'll say 200 BCE, onward uh and it's not just literature found in the bible there's extra biblical apocalyptic literature um in apocalyptic literature the writer always sees some wild thing like an angel standing on a river with a sword of fire and he looks to the sky and says some cryptic stuff or some other thing like that that is what, you know, that's the type of vision that these people get. And then an angel comes in to explain that vision to them afterward. And it usually ends with the Jewish people being like vindicated in some way or saved or helped or whatever. That's usually how the apocalyptic literature goes. Um, the book of Revelation is apocalyptic literature. The ultimate point behind the apocalyptic literature, that is the book of Revelation, was that Nero, Emperor Nero, was persecuting the Jews, and he was going to get his. Just give it a little bit of time, and he was going to get it. Um, the number of the beast, 666. In other manuscripts, the number of the beast is 616. That's a Jewish puzzle from that time period, like a, a number puzzle, kind of like Sudoku, where you add all the numbers up and in, in a name or in a word or whatever, and you get a final product. Well, it's called Gamatria. Well, Nero added up to 616. Neron, with an extra N... His actual correct name added up to 666. The book was very obviously, I mean, the book of Revelation, it was about Nero and how he was persecuting Jews. Uh, there is absolutely no question about that. Nobody wonders. Scholars aren't sitting here scratching their heads or any of that other junk. We know. We know what the book of Revelation was about. So it always, like, amuses the hell out of me to listen to these people, like Hank Kuhneman, completely misinterpret, blindly. Like, he has no idea what's going on right now. Has no clue what he's reading or what he's talking about, okay? So, and I, I, I'm not even sure what he's going to do with this verse. So let's see what he, what he does here. Uh, by the way, I wrote about that extensively in my book about apocalyptic literature, about the book of Daniel and Revelation and what the beasts actually really were and how Jehovah's Witnesses twist that out of proportion and everything else. It's pretty fascinating stuff, actually. The lamb as it had been slain. So he's showing him the crucifixion. As he had been slain, he sees the crucified Christ, having seven horns, seven eyes, seven spirits of God. Okay, when you see the word seven in uh, the book of Revelation, it's a reference to Rome. 
the city of seven hills city built on seven hills that's what it was known as rome is the roman empire that that's what they were talking about any references to seven is rome any references to 10 in apocalyptic writing universally is considered to mean lots it doesn't mean anything specific it doesn't mean like exactly 10 of this or that or whatever it means a lot of something so keep that in mind Se a beast with seven heads and ten horns the beast was rome and it had lots of horns uh, you know i could go through the whole thing uh, you know a uh, horror babylon on his back drinking the blood of the innocents um the horror of babylon is supposed to be false religion so on and so forth there's a whole lot there that i don't need to get into right now he came and he took the book out of the right hand all right and he said, who are these uh, four beasts and 20 elders that fell before the Lamb, having every one of them what? They had musical instruments, man. They had guitars. Um, no. But okay, go on. Right? No, not right. I mean, how do you know? We're still arguing whether they were locusts, grasshoppers, or helicopters. What the hell is he talking about right now? How do you know those harps weren't? Guitars, you don't know. Really? You don't know that the harps referred to in the Bible weren't guitars? You don't know? Are you kidding me with this right now? Really? You got to be joking. Don't look at me religious or I'm going to get worse. <laughs> all right back up to verse five all right what's this about the lion that scares me all right and one of the elders in heaven saith unto him unto john weep not look with your eyes the lion of the tribe of judah who was he talking about oh my god like when you start with complete nonsense you end in like uh, just a different reality. It's insane. This guy is starting in nonsense. Like the idea that the book of Revelation was about something other than the city of Rome and Nero and Jewish persecution. This guy is just going off into la la land right now. He was talking about Yeshua. Yeshua was Jesus' name, by the way. In the, um, that's probably how it was pronounced. Yeshua? actually is how it was pronounced uh there is an a on the end but it was likely not actually pronounced that's what we were singing about today and when god roars guess what he does what does god do when he roars hank have you ever heard a lion roar i have i was in a lion park in south africa i was in a car and the lion came right up to the window and he roared it shook the whole car i thought the car was going to tip over i have never heard a lion roar i imagine it's very loud and scary though did you guys know you can move the screen around with l and r all you got to do is hit like l and r and it and it and it pushes it forward i thought that's kind of cool i felt it go through my being can you imagine Yeshua, the Lion of Judah, because of the injustice that's been happening, the wickedness, that now he... Wait, what injustice are we talking about exactly? He's talking about Donald Trump. That's, that's the injustice. That Trump is not the president. In his head, that's the injustice. He's roaring against it and about it. And so he's looking for somebody on the earth that's willing to play like David on a harp or a guitar. He's I, again, what? A, a guitar? Does he really think that they played guitars back then instead of harps in the Bible? Does he really think that? Looking for you in the audience that lift up your voice and begin to sing unto the Lord a new song so he can execute that justice in the earth. Come on, give God a shout of praise. Yeshua! Yeshua! Lord. Like, I love how he's not pr even pronouncing the name correctly exactly. Uh, but, you know, uh, close enough, I suppose. It's, it's certainly not Jesus. That was a 
kind of a Greekified or a Hellenized version to some degree. Man of Judah, you reign, you reign, you reign in justice and in righteousness. Have your way for the sake of the children. All right, I'm going to jump forward because there's more, uh, you know, more. Okay, let's see. We were and we are. Okay, let's see. What's he doing here? Sense of retribution payback for them. It was against the forces of darkness. Okay, now I, I, the, here we go. Now he's praying to God and pretending that God is speaking through him. This sounds interesting. Greatest victory meal that we celebrate. You don't take it solemn, right? You take it in victory. Lord, there's a soberness in the sense of Jesus. You are, you are mutilated in your body in the sense of the way that they whipped you and beat you and bruised you and punched you and struck you. Um, okay, sure. I suppose that's Christian, like, um, canon or whatever. On human recognition, in fact, the book of Isaiah said when they looked up at the Lamb, it said we were abhorred to look at him. We hid our face from him. You know why? The word abhorred means when they looked up at him, they, they, they vomited. Uh, no, that's not what the word abhorred means. Because where where did he get that? He just, is he just like making things up here? Is he just like pretending to know things that he doesn't actually know? Is that what's happening right now? There he was. Oh God, bruised for our iniquities. He gave his face to the smiters, his beard to be plucked out by those who were guilty as he stood in his innocence. They struck him on his mouth, but yet the Son of God opened not his mouth. There was no guile. There was no sense of retribution payback for them. It was against the forces of darkness. He held his silence, and as they plated a crown of thorns upon his head, it brought the wisdom of God, the mind of Christ, the knowledge of God to us. They whipped him. With a cat of nine tails, they made deep long their furrows like a farmer plowing a field. They plowed the blessed Messiah's back, making deep long. Their Dude, why is he telling this story about Jesus dying? What a weird thing to do, right? To talk about some guy's death. Their furrows, but yet scripture declares by those furrows, those stripes, we were and we are healed. They took his hands and they pulled it as far as they could on the left and on the right. And they nailed him to the cross. And when they did it, he cried out, Father, Father, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them, forgive them. They okay, that's not what happened at all. And by the way, it completely depends on which version of the Bible you're, or I'm sorry, which, well, which version you're reading and also which gospel account you're reading. It depends which gospel account. Are you reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, or John? What did Jesus say? What happened? It's all different. Forgive them for they know not what they do. Um, I think in the book of Mark and maybe Matthew, he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And I know that people come up with this big explanation, oh, the book of Psalms, and he, blah, 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 blah. yeah, that's just complete nonsense. None of that, like, scholars believe that this is a genuine question that Jesus was asking. Why did God forsake him? Why was God making him go through this suffering when he didn't need to, basically? Fascinating. say it once he kept repeating it and repeating it and repeating it and then they took his feet and they began to drive the nails into the very crucified Christ and yet he spoke again father father forgive them they know not what they do mm, okay sure god he's like drawing some vivid imagery here This is our lion. 
Oh, right, because he claimed that Jesus was both the lion and the lamb with absolutely no, like, reason to make that claim, no evidence, no nothing, okay? Yeshua. <sighs> we stand in awe. You know, this is a really weird service, like a really, really weird thing for him to be like doing and talking about. But at least he's talking about Jesus. I can appreciate that. Usually the dude talks about Trump nonstop. In fact, I'm 100% sure that he's going to talk about Trump very soon. Let's see if I can jump forward a little bit. Uh, hold on. Let me just look. I'm curious. Let, let's just jump forward. Oh, that's right. Yeah, okay. Let's, uh, he had a guest speaker. Okay, let's start from right here. I got to say this. Go, Pat, go. The reason to join you right there. All right, Saturday, March 16th, Embassy Suites, where we had the men's me meeting, 10 a.m. And I uh, He's shouting out his stuff now. Okay. I'm telling you, you're going to you're going to be blessed and uh, your life and your health is going to be transformed. All right. Well, we're ready to get started. And uh, I know uh, this is going to be an amazing, amazing short, shorter message, but we're going to get into it. And I know God's going to give me grace. I want you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 11. And uh, by the way, Doc Darcy, I'm looking forward to uh, and the media team. Pay attention to what I'm going to say. We're going to be taping, as you know, two shows or maybe three on just health and, and the blood and different things. I'm just going to let them talk. And then we're going to put out that information right away that will even have the information where you can join them for the seminar. All right, I want you to look at Luke chapter 11. And the reason I want to go here is this is the, this is the kind of the opening text scripture. And I believe that there is a prophetic word in this that God is saying. Uh-oh, there's a prophetic word that God's saying that he's giving Hank, okay? To us. Did we not have an amazing time with God this morning? I, I, I love that about the Lord. Um, and it came to pass that when Jesus was praying in a certain place, when he stopped, okay? Now, how many of you know you can learn to pray by being around others that pray stronger than, than you or differently even? Uh, and he... I'm sorry, what? You've got to learn to pray? I, from what I can remember, Jesus just basically, he said, you know, it, this is how you pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, so on and so forth, right? But I, from my understanding, you just have to say, dear God, address it to him like it's, like it's a letter, and then say amen at the end, right? Okay. Stopped, and one of his disciples said, Lord Jesus, hey, teach us to pray. In other words, I want to pray just like what I just heard. And I believe if you underline that, and those of you that are watching that phrase, teach us to pray, I believe this is what God is saying. We have had in really the body of Christ, if you look at what happened before uh, the pandemic, that... The pandemic, he said. What happened before the pandemic? Because, you know, the pandemic was planned by the big evil corporations or whatever. And the government, can't forget the government, it was planned by them so that, that you know, because they want to, like, stop pastors from doing whatever the hell he thinks he's not supposed to be doing. I don't know. Hit the world. The devil was already breaking down kind of the mindset, perspective, belief of preachers, uh, the body of Christ around the world, and a user-friendly movement still around, started really taking ground, and, and churches grew up overnight, and the big thing was is we don't want to offend a visitor, but they kicked the Holy Spirit out, and you didn't see... Wait, is he saying that churches were too afraid to offend people? They didn't want to offend a visitor, so they, like they lost God's blessing or whatever? Is that what he's saying? The move of the Holy Spirit. Nobody talked about tongues or, or miracles or healing. And then you began to see advertisements. It wasn't, you know, come hear truth. It was, you know, come experience our coffee. Come experience our donut. And somehow... Um, does he think that, like... <laughs> wait a minute. Is, is he saying that during the pandemic was the very first time ever that anybody, any church anywhere, 
Ever tried to lure people in with coffee and donuts? Bro, come on. This is so, like, not believable. It's ridiculous. I'm like King Jesus got replaced by King uh, non-holy called a donut or whatever. You know, it's just wrong. And it's great. It, what, I guess it's wrong to uh, serve donuts and coffee at, uh, at church. Okay? News to me. Previous to God, and I take personally, as one who wants the heart of God, I take somewhat of an offense of that. I'm like, Lord, you, you didn't, you know, bleed on the cross so that we can reduce you and your church. But we got... Com it's sure offensive for people to eat, you know, eat donuts and drink coffee at a church. Boy, is that offensive, huh? Place it, and and people began to you know let's not offend anybody. And then all of a sudden, look at what happened, man. They began to go after our our vocabulary and change pronouns and tell us how to talk. You know. Wait, who is they? Who who's he talking about? Oh my God, dude! All I had to do is skip forward just a little bit, and now the psych the psychotic stuff comes out. Who is telling you to like change pronouns or whatever? Hank, did somebody tell you to change pronouns? And uh, they, they tried to get rid of the good king's English called the Bible. And, and the list goes on and on and on and on. What? Who, who tried to get rid of the Bible? I'm not like I'm an atheist and I'm not even trying to get rid of the Bible. What are you talking about? Good king's English. What? And what God is trying to say to us is, listen, we are in a time right now that we've got to pray different you say well what kind of prayer is that i want to uh oh he's going down his imprecatory prayer uh route right now if you're unfamiliar he's been doing all these sermons lately where he basically says that we should be praying to curse people we should be we should be praying for people's death is basically what what he's saying when he says imprecatory prayers he means we should be praying for people's death so uh, that's what he means when he says he's going to teach us to pray. Remind you of something in this chapter, and this is your homework for the week. Go back and look at Luke 11. Jesus shows you three dimensions of prayer in this same chapter. Now, we always, you know, pull out the Lord's Prayer. We always pull out, you know, what you see. You know, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The first thing you do is you always worship God. You should always connect your heart with God. That's what I taught the men yesterday is the Bible said God looked he sought for somebody in the earth that would have his heart. And uh, I believe God's still looking. And, uh, you know, I want to be one of those that he looks at and says, man, there may be a lot of people walking this earth, but boy, you have my heart. That's what I want more than anything. I could care less what people think. Honestly, I don't care what they write. I really don't. I just want to know what God thinks. Right. And apparently he believes that god wants him to pray for people's death okay and if he's pleased then that's all i'm concerned about if he's and god will be pleased if you pray for people's death not then i want to do something about it whether it's in my life my country the state of his church i want to be uh pleasuring god like a young man should huh a, a spokesman for him but here's the thing you have to keep reading in luke 11 and you're going to see three dimensions how many of you know what he said he said ask seek and knock well people know how to ask some know how to seek god but others don't but there's the last one knock and that is like a battering ram it's spiritual warfare it's breakthrough it's a tenacity and this is what the lord is wanting you say well give me an example look at psalm 58 now you have to understand that there's there's uh, the canon of scripture how many of you know how many books are in your in your bible 66 books in the Bible, and I believe it's, uh, how many is in the New Testament? 20, wait. There's a special, um, wait a minute. There's a, there's a, like, not a pneumatic device to remember this, but, um, or mnemonic, I'm sorry. Not a mnemonic device, but there's a, there's a way of remembering how many are in the New Testament. I think it's 30, no, I think it's 27. Yes, it's 27. 27 books in the New Testament, I believe. 66 in the Bible. 66, all right? And here's what you have to understand. What, he's not going to tell us how many in the New Testament? How many books? I, the reason I think that it's 27 in the New Testament before I look this up 
is because um, three is like, you know, father, son, holy ghosts, you know, the, the three is a special number in the Bible. Three to the third power is 27. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. And I'm right. Yes, that's it. Now you guys have a method of remembering how many books there are in the Bible, uh, in the New Testament specifically. Three to the third power. There are 27 books in the New Testament. The Bible does reference, for example, in the book of Jude, the book of Enoch, but it's not part of the 66. Doesn't mean it's not a legitimate book. Oh, he's talking about non-canonical books. Necessarily, it just means for whatever reason, when men were moved upon by the Holy Spirit to write the scriptures and God collected and said, this is the Bible, this is what we're going to use. The book of Jasher, you could read that in the... Jasher is not a real book as far as I can tell. Um... It was referenced somewhere, but there's no way of really knowing if it's even real. It's likely fabricated. Um, he's mentioned Jasher a couple of times. I don't know why he keeps mentioning that one. Yeah, uh, uh, book of Joshua, uh, chapter 10, I believe it's verse 13, where it talks about when the sun stood still. That's recorded in the book of Jasher. Well, for whatever reason, that book didn't become the canon of Scripture. Well, that book doesn't exist. We do not have a copy of that book. But here's what we do have. We have the book of Psalms and Jesus, even his last uh, remaining moments of... Oh no, he's gonna, he's going to commit the immortal sin, in my opinion, of cl trying to explain away Jesus saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me, isn't he? On the uh, cross upon the earth, he quoted out of the book of Psalms. You can find one example, Psalm 22, where he, he said, they pierced my hands and my feet. He said, my God, my God, why have thou forsaken me? I knew he was going to do that. I knew it. Okay. Old Testament, uh, the book of Psalms has this, I, I don't remember what it, I, it's something about like a quote about God forsaking people or something. I don't even remember now. It's been forever since I've looked into it. But as far as scholars can tell, as far as anybody... I mean, I'm talking evangelical scholars, too. I'm talking anybody that, like, knows the Bible to any serious degree, that studies it, that, uh, you know, knows anything about it, evangelical or whatever, they all basically accept that Jesus was asking a genuine question and this whole book of Psalms thing. Oh, Jesus is quoting the book of Psalms. Yeah, that's just made up. That's just fabricated. After the fact, people didn't understand why Jesus said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? So they came up with an explanation after the fact. And the explanation, uh, he was quoting um, from the book of Psalms. That's just like, there's no evidence for that, none. Which is, he was quoting it, he wasn't uh, saying that his God forsook him, and I proved that out, you should get a, a book I wrote called My Heart Cries Abba, I prove it out. Oh, proves it out, yeah, I bet, yeah, he totally proves it out. No, this is completely made up. Jesus was genuinely asking, you know why I say that? I talk about this at length in my book, um, owamorgan.com slash book, if you want to find it, but... Okay, I knew that, like, there are two doors, and I wasn't sure which one was the correct door. So the, f the second door is apparently not correct. So let's try the first door in this game. Anyway, um, I talk about this at length. Jesus did not expect to die. I have sources for this. The footnotes. Jesus didn't expect to die. And his disciples didn't expect him to die either. Jesus didn't believe himself to be the son of man, although his apostles did think he was the son of man. Son of man being that old prophet, you know, sent by God, like the Messiah, basically. Jesus didn't believe himself to be the Messiah, but his apostles did believe that about him. So anyway, when he died, it didn't make any sense to anybody, Jesus included. Like, wait, why are they killing me? I'm supposed to deliver a message. He believed himself to be a 
a prophet, not the Messiah, but a guy that was going to deliver a message, basically. And, um, yeah, there you go. Just boom, he's dead, just like that. And everyone was, like, all confused and had no idea what was going on. Anyway, like I said, I write about it. If you want to read more, check out my book, omamorgan.com slash book. But, uh, yeah, let's keep reading, or let's keep listening here. I proved that out. You should get a, a book I wrote called My Heart Cries Abba. I prove it out. You know, I, do you have any footnotes? A single footnote in that book? If you don't have a footnote, you can't tell me that you proved anything. I have five pages of footnotes, and they're, like, tiny. Before I, in my book, before I added, like, or I, I changed the footnotes to be, like, smaller, um, I had... 30 or 40 pages of like it, when the text was the same size. I really wanted to cite my sources on all of this stuff in my book. Did he cite a single source? To be perfectly honest with you, I don't know of a single like um, religious writer, um, Hank Kuhneman or... Uh, what's his name? Eric Metaxas or any of these people. I don't know a single person who is religious who writes a book about the historicity of the Bible or whatever. I don't know a single one of them who uses footnotes or who uses any kind of uh, citations of any sort. They just like make things up right off the top of their heads and they get away with it. I would expect you guys to hold me accountable if I got something wrong like that. Or if I didn't cite sources. All sources should be cited, in my opinion. This dude is just like... Anyway, yeah, so I'm sure. Totally, he proved it. Right, absolutely, I, I believe it. But here's what you have to look. We love the Psalms that say, you know, uh, thousands fall at my side, ten thousands at my right hand, but it doesn't come near me. Psalm 91. But what about this one? Break well, what does that have to do with anything? I don't know. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Well, we can pray that today and say, God, break the teeth of those that are lying through media, social media. Break the teeth of those that are trying to put a grip and a bite into the generation through uh, with wickedness and evil, perversion. Break the bite and the grip of those that are going after sexually exploiting our children. We have a right. Okay, this isn't happening. Sexually exploiting children and all that, that's not happening. That is a fabrication. You live in a fantasy land if you think that's happening, okay? Nobody is sexually exploiting children. Nobody is trying to convince kids there are more genders, blah, 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 any of that other stuff. No one is doing that. This is a culture war issue that this guy has decided to, like, really zero in on because he's a Republican, and he's desperate to work his Republicanism into his sermon he wants to mix church and state he wants the two to be one which is disturbing for all kinds of reasons to pray those and you can't just exclude it because you don't agree with it or you don't like it or it seems too harsh listen to this guy you can't just exclude it because you don't like it <laughs> okay and, and here's what you have to understand. I want you to go over into the New Testament. We're going to talk about in Acts chapter 8. And we're going to read along. And I'm going to show you examples where you can see what is called imprecatory. Uh, pre Again, it, when he says imprecatory, he means you need, to wish, you, you need to wish death on people. If you're not praying to God, wishing death on people, then you're not doing the right thing. Now, I just showed you that in Psalm 58. Now, you have to understand that there are 150 psalms. And what you have to realize is 90 out of the 150 psalms are imprecatory prayers or statements. That okay, just, for, um, just to have a little bit of context here, psalms literally means songs. They were songs. They, it was the Jewish hymnal. Um, Jews had a rich history of oral storytelling back in the day, long and long ago. 
only 90% of the world was even capable of reading or, or writing. Uh, and it, there, it wasn't a guarantee that you could write if you could read and vice versa either. 90% were incapable of it. So how did they keep their history? How did they retain their history? Oral storytelling. They would make songs about their lives or their histories or their whatevers and they would sing them and it, it you know they rhymed and they worked together and it acted to preserve the stories pretty well actually Stor uh, oral storytelling was pretty valuable um, for a long time anyway uh, that's what the book of psalms is it's the jewish hymnal it's the jewish songbook where they were trying to, it was like their, their oral storytelling. Now, it's also called antiquity literature, same as Genesis, where it doesn't differentiate between myth, fact, and legend. It just takes, you know, these stories took anecdotes and combined them with legends and campfire stories and origin stories and crazy things that were really interesting to some people and turned the people into heroes. You know, the Jews were all heroes in all of these stories, of course. That's what the book of Psalms was. It was a song book. So anyway, uh, let's listen to Hank Kuhneman tell us that we need to be praying for people's death. You know, I, look, let me establish that real quick because i i'm saying in precretory prayers and and all that but i'm not actually giving you like the evidence here so let me find the clip here hang on um here here yeah this is the clip in fact it's it was recent um this is January 29th, 2024, when this came out. And he lays it on the line as much as he can without being co just like coming out and saying it. And whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Arise, O Lord, and let your enemies be scattered, and let those who hate you flee before you. Again, like everything that they're saying here, this is all just like origin stories and stuff. Antiquity literature is what it's called. Well, that's the Roman name for it. Wow, I just got bodied. Um, that's the Roman name for it. There was a Greek name for it, too. They called it um, archaeology literature, I think. Look at what Deborah prayed. So may all your enemies perish, Lord, but your friends be like the sun as he rises in his might. And let the land have rest for 40 years. Come on, man. Look at what Nehemiah prayed. Hear, O God, for we are despised. So... Um, the prayers that, that this guy is highlighting right now are prayers for people to die. They're like Nehemiah and stuff, praying for the death of God's enemies. Turn back their taunts on their own heads. Come on, lying fake news and give them up to be plundered in a land where they are captives. See, we need to start praying bolder. See, we're not calling harm on anyone. We're asking God to deal with his justice. I mean, that that's pretty on the nose. It doesn't get much more clear than that, does it? See, we're not wishing harm on anyone. We are wishing for God to deal with his justice. That's what he means when he says imprecatory prayer. He means he wants his congregation to start praying for people's death. That's psychotic. what you have to realize is 90 out of the 150 psalms are imprecatory prayers or statements that are sung, decreed, prophesied. Well, what's imprecatory? It's prayers or decrees, words that uh, release blessings or curses, or really you could say it this way, invokes the justice of God. We say, well, pastor, we shouldn't be cursing anybody. Well, I'm not talking about placing curses on somebody what i'm saying is you are invoking the justice of god so you're praying for their death you're praying for people's death that's what he's saying that he removes his hand of blessing 
The Bible says in the New Testament that vengeance is the Lord's. I'm not telling you to take up personal vengeance. Jesus taught us. He said, you heard it in Matthew 5. I said an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, love your enemies and pray for those that despitefully use who? You. So he's talking about don't have personal enemies. Don't be, you know, trying to, you know, break out the teeth of your. Wow, this is really interesting, dude. I've got to write this timestamp down. Um, one thirty-eight oh five. Yeah, I got to write this down and talk about it later. One thirty-eight oh five. Hank Kuneman says we should be praying for the death of our enemies again. That's really interesting that he's laying it out that way. I got to get off of here in a second. Should have already gotten off of here, but that's okay. Because he made you mad. They pulled out in traffic. They don't, you know, they're part of your family. You don't like them. They live across the street, whatever. And he said, you know, if somebody smites your cheek, uh, Matthew 5, he said, turn the other cheek. Now, he's not talking about that you have to let somebody punch you. If somebody throws a punch at you... No, that's literally exactly what Jesus was saying. Jesus was saying, turn the other cheek. He's saying, ignore it. Move on with your life. You're not supposed to focus in on the bad. Look for the good. He was a hippie. Dude was... I don't know. Like He's the exact polar opposite of Hank Kuhneman, so it doesn't surprise me that... Hank do, just does not get it at all. You, you have a right to defend yourself and deck them back. It's not what he's talking about. If somebody tries to break into your home, right, you have a right to defend yourself. You have a right to get three German shepherds and a, and a very active Shih Tzu. Who and an active Shih Tzu. Now he's talking about, like, American rights or whatever. Now he's talking about... Um, what do you call it? Like, he's talking about, uh, oh my God, it's slipping my mind. Now he's talking about, like, um, state, not just church, but now he's talking about state. That is fascinating to me, that he's, like, linking them so inextricably. I'll tell you what, guys, sadly, I have to get off of here, unfortunately. It's been fun. Don't forget, check out my book. I would really appreciate that very much. OwenMorgan.com slash book. Um, yeah, it, it's got a whole bunch of information about like what this guy's talking about and apocalyptic literature and the whole nine. So check that out. I would really appreciate it. Anyway, yeah. Oh, and it, it details my experience as a Jehovah's Witness and what I think um, about the religion and how doctrine is wrong in that religion. It's good for non-Jehovah's Witnesses. It's good for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses. It's good for Christians who've never been a part of it. It's good for people who are uh, atheists and want to understand the religion better. It's good for everybody. It's written from a perspective that anybody can understand. Just pick it up and understand it. So yeah, give it a read. owenmorgan.com slash book. Okay. All right, uh, Coopmaster, Nericle, thank you guys for coming. Thank you, everybody else. I will talk to you guys tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on my Owen Unfiltered YouTube channel.